I'm Daniel Farber Wong, and I'm leveraging my interest in book collecting, exploration, and technology to preserve threatened books in secure data vaults located deep in the Arctic permafrost on storage media designed to last 2,000 years or eternity, whichever comes later. I launched the Eternal Access Project to permanently protect the words, ideas, and contents of books that have been either banned in years past or are actively being threatened today. These books will be accessible by future generations should all other sources become inaccessible or cease to exist. I also want to make a clear statement to the book banners that long after they are dust, the books and ideas that they are trying to silence will far outlive them. The book banners may be fighting battles against thoughts and ideas today, but I want to do my part to ensure that they lose the war. The idea for the Eternal Access Project led me north of the Arctic Circle to Svalbard, Norway, which is located halfway between Northern Europe and the North Pole. On Svalbard, the Eternal Access Project is located in Longyearbyen, which is the northernmost city in the world. The remote location, combined with its many polar bears, provides natural protection against potential threat actors. In short, it is not easy to get to. Permafrost ice covers the entire landmass of Svalbard, and Longyearbyen only has about 2,400 residents. Don't get me wrong, it is a lovely place, and even boasts the world's northernmost craft brewery. Five stars, with expedition to again. We store our collection in the Arctic World Archive, an ultra-secure data vault located in a decommissioned coal mine hundreds of meters under the permafrost, kept at a constant temperature between 19 degrees and 23 degrees Fahrenheit. It takes about 20 minutes walking underground to get to the vault, so you definitely want to have a spare flashlight with you inside the mine just in case. The doors to the vault in Svalbard are opened only two or three times a year, and additions to our growing collection will be deposited accordingly. Several museums and universities also archive their histories and collections there. The facility is offline, off-grid, carbon neutral, and does not require electricity to maintain the cold, which provides additional protections to ensure ultra long-term storage. It's cold work, but somebody's got to do it, and we are more than happy to zip up our parkas to make it happen. Phase one of our project has focused on preserving hundreds of historically banned books. Now, in phase two, we are reaching out to contemporary authors and publishers to add their threatened works into the collections and also include threatened art and music. We want to expand from Shakespeare to shake it off. I want everyone to recognize that we each have the power in our own way to protect free speech, books, and ideas from the forces of oppression, ignorance, and cruelty. So I ask you, will you help to take a stand when our children, our communities, and our world need you most? Thank you very much.